Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Lindsay series. This is one of the nine districts of Lincolnshire and one of the county's most rural. It has 128 civil parishes. Let's see which one this episode's all about. Welcome back to West Lindsay, everybody. You find me on a parish boundary to start this one. And on that parish boundary, there's a village hall. As you can see, here's the village hall. Now this serves both of the villages on which this parish boundary is sited. And these are the two villages in question. One of them is Cherry Willingham, but we're not interested in that one today. We're interested in the other one. Now, how would you pronounce that, do you think? Well, most people would go Reapham that would be wrong i'm going to get a measure of revenge in this episode for the amount of times people have said to me oh you're pronouncing this wrong are oh, you pronouncing that wrong well here you will all pronounce this one wrong because it is not reapem welcome to reefem <laughs> The West Lindsay series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop. Located at 20 Ropery Road or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. And this video is also sponsored by Jamie's Fitness Studio. Based on Low Road Graingham near Curtin in Lindsay, Jamie is one busy lady. Check her out by calling 07906 749 574 or emailing hello at jamies.co.uk. Online membership is available. There's a link to her Facebook page in the description. Jamie's Fitness Studio. Get fit, get happy, get healthy. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to a village I know so very well. Many people think this is Reapham, but it is in fact Reefham. The PH in its name forms an F sound. Trust me, I'm a local. This pronunciation makes a lot of sense when you consider where the name comes from. Reefham was originally Reefham and was the residence of the Reeve, a senior official who was the king's representative at Lincoln. The Reeve's estate was sizable and incorporated the area now occupied by the parishes of Fiskerton, Scothan and Barlings, as well as Reefham. By the 8th century AD, this area was already thriving. Reefham has continued to grow ever since. By the early medieval period, the village had largely developed its present layout. In the 1920s, it was known to the locals as the frying pan, thanks to its shape. It was elongated at one end, much like a panhandle, whilst the other end was a loop, formed of Station Road, the Green and Smooting Lane. Reefham's largest growth came in the 19th century when Lincoln was transforming into an industrial centre. Many houses went up for the city's workers, but Reefham had its own employment opportunities as well. One of these was the Burton Hunt Kennels, and that's how Kennel Lane in the village gets its name. Reefham once had a railway station, a bakery, and even a co-op in someone's front room. Let's see what it's got these days in 2023. Our start point is the village hall, right on the Reefham Cherry Willingham border. This hall is a shared facility used by both villages. 
It was opened in 1983 and replaced an original hall which dated back to 1950, built by Reef and Parish Council. A popular venue, it has a lounge, bar and a storeroom which were all added in 1991. The hall is kind of out on a limb, so our main walk actually begins at the other end of the village. This is Fiskerton Road, and that is Reefham's old railway station. It closed in 1965 and the building is now a private residence. It was the only village station on this line that was actually in the village it served. Like Wickenby, Reefham once had a coal yard and a sidings which are now occupied by two bungalows. There's no trace of the station's once staggered platforms, nor the signal box which was removed some years ago. And now we're on Smooting Lane. A smooting is a word that means a gap. Here it's a gap between houses and Reefham Cricket Club. This is this is so great. <laughs> I'm I'm going to stop talking about you know my experiences uh, in this place to be honest with you because I don't want it to be all about me. I want it to be about the village and that's the important thing here. So we'll cut that now and we'll head straight for the church, which is this way. So uh, we'll keep walking and it just appears on the right hand side. Well, I say on the right hand side. It's actually on the left, but um, you can walk through it. So that's basically what we're going to do. In the 1920s, Reefham's shape was compared to that of a frying pan. It had a long, elongated handle, which we know today as Hawthorne Road. The other end was the pan itself, Smooting Lane, Station Road and the Green. This is the latter of those three, and it's where we find the parish notice board these days. Mark it off. At one time, the Green is believed to have been much larger than it is now. It would have encompassed the church and the vicarage. The once open space has been encroached upon by later houses and front gardens, leaving only a small triangle now. It would also explain why Church Lane splits into two parts. Both the roads in front and behind the church are called Church Lane, which is why walking from this direction, it appears on both sides of the road, depending on which fork you walk down. I took the left-hand fork where there's a portion of the churchyard on the other side of the road. You can walk down the right hand fork too, but we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so we've arrived at the church. Now we can walk through this. I wonder, well, I hope this one's open actually, because I know it's good inside in this one. So uh, the door looks open, that's good. So we'll head into this and then through the churchyard and then we'll sort of loop back around it. You can see the vicarage on the left. We come sort of behind this. There's a path that runs behind that and behind these houses to my left and take us, it'll take us back to the main street. Reefham may well have had a Saxon chapel as part of the Reeves residence, but if it did, it was on a different site to this, the present church. Dedicated to St. Peter and St. Paul, the oldest part of this one dates from the late 12th century. In the 13th century, it was one of the most valuable churches in the deanery, as indicated by tax surveys of the time. In 1631, the living of the church was purchased by the Mercer's Company of London under the terms of the will of Richard Fishbourne. To this day, the Mercers still support the maintenance of the church as one of its patrons. Now you'll note inside this one there's no pews. They were removed in 2013 as part of a major refurbishment as they were deemed unsafe. Modern chairs and a laminate floor are favoured now. This followed other improvements in 2010 when a toilet and a servery were installed in the base of the tower. Here's the war memorial tablet with nine names listed upon it. Okay, now we're going to follow the footpath that runs down the back of the vicarage and the old police house where I was stood before we went into the church. It, can, it forks here. We're, we're going this way back towards the main street, but you can go the other way. If you follow it this way, this will take you towards Kennel Lane. I think it comes out on Kennel Lane, actually, if you take that path, but we're not going down there anyway. So we're uh, heading down this one. This will take us towards the main road, and I think the next thing to see is an old Methodist church. Old Methodist Church, he says. Who am I kidding? It's still going. This is the building in question on the end of Chapel Close. For the majority of the Victorian era, Reefham's Methodists met in a reading room on the High Street. This was replaced by this purpose-built chapel in 1894. For many years, it held a Sunday school. 
Speaking of schools, there's one directly opposite. A Church of England school, this was built in 1859 thanks to the efforts of Reverend Jones. Between them, the school and the Methodist Church define Reefham's village centre. It's by far the busiest area of what is a thriving village. Now we're following the High Street westwards to where it eventually changes its name to Hawthorne Road. As the road bends towards it, we come across the 18th century Manor House. The manor house is second only to the church as Reefham's oldest property. The Reeves enclosure is believed to have been close to this somewhere. Now if you're new to Reefham, like some of you out there will be, you learn pretty quickly that it's a windy old village. It's not a straight, lengthy, you know, one street job. It certainly isn't one of those. It's got quite a few twists and turns on this main road. And we're at one of these twists and turns here. This is a, a right turn, which takes you towards Cherry Willingham and the village hall where I began. Now what we can do at this point here is there's a little street just beyond this house you can see in shop now. If you go up there, then you uh, are able to get through onto like a playground, which takes you onto a footpath that runs sort of back that way um, and comes out near the school so it, so it forms kind of a loop so that's what we're doing This is Manor Rise, one of Reefham's newer housing areas. I can't call this the newest of the new these days because brand new properties are still springing up all over the village, most notably these days on Fiskerton Road. Some of these new developments stand on land that was once occupied by lost farms. As we make our way past this playground at the top of the street, which is next to a football pitch by the way, we're heading for the site of one of those lost farms, which is now under some housing. Mellows Close stands where Somme Farm was once located. It was part of Mellows Farm, hence the name, and it operated as a dairy in the 1930s. Its buildings were demolished in 1968 to make way for this street. Mellows Farm itself was on the High Street, and it was named after two brothers, George and Jim Mellows. Speaking of the High Street, we're back to it now. Check out these gorgeous old houses opposite Mellows Close. Okay, a little loop completed. We're now out of Mellis Close, and here we have a bus stop. Number three to Lincoln by Cherry Willingham. That sounds familiar to me. <laughs> yes, indeed. As, as you can see here, look, it's only Monday to Saturday, and there's no Sunday or public holiday service, and it ends just after seven o'clock at night. So after that time, Reefen becomes an island. You need to get somewhere at, uh, at that time or beyond, you need a car, or a taxi at least. Right, over the road and towards what used to be Reefham's post office. Although it looks closed, this is still Reefham's post office. This was a Wednesday when it closes at 1pm. In times past, Reefham had a branch of the Lincolnshire Cooperative Society whose premises were situated in the front room of someone's house on the High Street. As you can imagine, they were totally inadequate. The co-op though did supply all the villages within a five mile radius and lasted until 1979. Reefham also had a separate bakery at the other end of the High Street, which closed in the 1990s. Now let's talk pubs. Mentions of alehouses in the village date back as far as 1796, and if you continue on to Station Road here, you'll find the Fox and Hounds. I've only ever known this pub in Reefham, but my research told me there were once two. The other was called the Checkers, which closed in 1974. I've spent many hours in this pub before now, but perhaps the most interesting thing about the Fox and Hounds is its name. To explain it, we need today's special section. In the Burton episode, we didn't really have time to cover in depth the Burton Hunt. Established in 1672, it's still going today with a full-time huntsman, whipper in and groom, all of whom are based at the Hunt Kennels at Rhizome, seen here. However, those kennels were originally in Burton itself. In 1842, Lord Henry Bentinck, Hunt Master at the time, decided new kennels were needed. They were built in 1848 in Reefham and were located on Kennel Lane. They were a lavish affair with a covered ride, a Turkish bath, and room for over 200 hounds and 100 horses. They were simply the best that money could buy. 
1881, there were 21 people living in the kennels, including the families of their workers. But by 1889, they were badly in need of repair, and some of the hounds were suffering with kennel lameness. A year later, in 1890, they were relocated to Rice Home. Kennel Lane and Kennel Walk, though, preserve this piece of Reefham history. Okay, so we've made it back to the level crossing where we were earlier. All I've got to do now is hop across that crossing, down a footpath, which will take me back out onto Fiskerton Road, just to make an extra loop to the end of the walk. I could just walk straight back down Fiskerton Road, but I fancy spending a little bit longer in Reefham just yet. And we're back to the beginning. I have thoroughly enjoyed myself in this episode. Blimey, if I'm this excited about Reefham, what am I going to be like when Fiskerton comes up? Well, you're going to have to wait for that one, I'm afraid, guys, because I'm planning on doing that one plum last. 128 out of 128. I added this one on to this, to, to this day as an extra, to be honest with you, because I knew I was doing Barlings, which is the next one over. But uh, yeah, beautiful place, isn't it? I love it. I loved living out here and uh, I can't wait to come back to do the others around it. But for now, this has been the Parish of Reefham and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.